What's going on this morning, family? What's going on? Black Phoenix checking in, the owner of Hall on Welding LLC. And right now I'm at the headquarters and I want to talk to you about welding tools for beginners. The uh, reason I'm making this video because I had a few people ask me about some of the basic tools that uh, they need. Um, different YouTube videos have various type of must, must have tools. And I just wanted to give you something from my personal standpoint or some things that you would need that I think that'll be a great asset for a beginner. And honestly, to each his own with this, I'm just giving you my personal opinion. So giving you a couple of things that I feel like if you show up to a job and, you, and, and, and you're a welder and you're trying to um, get your first gig, some things that if you bring these things, the employer will look at you different. Like I have seen people pull up to a welding job and didn't even have boots on, had tennis shoes on and short pants. Like it's certain dress codes you're gonna have to get in line. And I wanna talk about that and show you the tools. So if you say you're a welder and you're going for an interview, you don't wanna dress up in a three piece suit. You don't wanna put your best Sunday gear on. You don't wanna look like you're a lawyer. You don't wanna look like a doctor. You wanna look like a welder. So what you wanna do is you wanna go with maybe a long sleeve shirt on, you know, um, for high vids or just a long sleeve, depends on if it's a shop welding job, you wanna have some, some boots on. You even wanna have a welding bill cap on to say, you know, or a welding bill in your, you know, in, in your back pocket. You know what I mean? Like they, they respect you looking like you're ready to go to work right then. That's one thing I have learned. Like if you pull up to the job and you do the, you do the interview where they say you do a little weld test and you look like you're ready or you go up to get the paperwork and you look like you're ready. I have had jobs that I have walked up to in the past that I just looked like I was ready and they hired me on the spot. Uh, actually, one of my jobs that um, I got in Fayetteville, which actually opened up a door for me in Fayetteville, Arkansas, as an ironworker welder, I walked up to the job site and I seen that was working and I said, hey, who's the foreman on the job site? It's like this guy right here. I said, hey man, uh, I'm new to the area. I'm a welder, iron worker. And hey, I think I can give you a hand. Told him what I was looking for. Told me to go up there, talk to the office. The people called me, did the paperwork, got the job. I was working that next day, I think. Or the next, I was working the next day, I believe. And I did that that morning. I went straight up there. So it was like a day or so when I was you know, on the job. So if you have your, you know, ha have your gear right. You know, have your PPE right. Have some good jeans. On, have your boots on, your steel toes, you know what I mean? Um, have your high beds or, or your welding gear on, you know what I mean? Just to say you're ready. You can be clean, you gotta look slouchy, but you just like you're ready to go to work. So, one of the things that is a great asset now, <clears throat> welding hoods come in dime a dozen. You can get them, everybody got their different kind, brand, style. <clears throat> so, I think that that could go different ways. So, my welding hood. It's actually, I think you should go with a auto marking hood now because with the technology, it can just help you do multi-process welding. So if you're a multi-process welder, having an auto darkening hood is a plus for you. You can do TIG, me and stick. So I think having an auto darkening hood is a plus. Uh, I have the Jackson hood. Actually, mine's a Jackson, and it's a classic Jackson, but I got the auto darkened lens in it. So that's what I have. And this is one that I use in the shop or the field, but majority of the time in the shop when I'm fabricating. And you want to have you some good welding gloves. These actually right here is some Lincoln gloves that I have um, that actually go with my Lincoln setup. I've been having these for a while. They're still good. I do a lot of fabrication with these gloves. And these are some good longer gloves. And you want to also, I didn't have none in the video. I left them in my truck. But you want to have you some small hand welding gloves, like some small gloves to pick up, you know, uh, various materials around the shop or whatever. Whatever You want to have some that you can put in your pocket to do jobs. I think it's always a plus to have you some big gloves and some small ones. Your leathers. These leathers right here has been with me for a long, long, long time. I actually got these welding, uh, these leathers so as I jumped into the, I've been having these for a long time. They're not retired yet, but I can still use them. Um, got a small hole on one side of it, but on the majority scale, these are still good leathers. I actually got some more too that I keep in my truck. You can get you some good leathers 
um, different companies sell them. You can go on Amazon and probably get you some for probably a range of 45 to probably $65. But having some good leathers with the bib on them is good. The one you can remove because sometimes you might just be doing some upper. You just got the top on. And if it's something that's going to probably burn you here, you want to put the bibs on them. Or the jacket. So people have their different preferences. So you can get the jacket or the, I like this one actually because I can take the sides off. And leathers can get hot on, depends on, can get hot, depends on what environment you're welding in, in the field or in the shop, depends on what type of welding you're doing. And so it can get hot. So honestly, I used my leathers a lot when I was in the shop doing flux core welding on heavy gauge steel. A lot of flux core when you're using anything, we was welding anything from an inch up, it was like an inch, two inches a lot, you know, and everything was bevel, half inch, half inch to two inches was a lot that we did. So a lot of times you want to have some good love because that flux core can get hot, it can pop, you know, normally you can get it set pretty good, but you still want to have some sleeves or something to cover your arms. Basic. Why brush? I think having you a long one is a plus, having you a short one. So I would say get two. Um, this video only have one, but I would say get two, get you a small one, you know, one of the small ones, and then get you a bigger wire brush. I think this is a plus to have. And a basic chipper hammer, you know, just a basic chipper hammer because this is a plus to have most definitely. And these are very uh, inexpensive. You can get these from Harbor Freight, Amazon, Walmart. Home Depot Lowe's, a lot of people, a lot of places sell those. Tape measure, make sure you have one of these. And I would say, if you're doing shop welding alone, at least have a 20 foot, 25 foot tape measure. This is a 35 foot. So I would say, I would recommend if you're doing field welding to have at least a 35 foot tape measure. You know, uh, field welder, iron workers who jump into that field, have at least a 35 if you're just doing shop only. 25 would be great. Uh, most sticks just comes in 20 foot sticks. Uh, you could probably get them up 24 foot sticks, but on a normal basis, you have a 25 foot tape measure, you're okay. But I would say keep a 35, in my opinion. That way you can hit, kill two birds in one song. 35 is good to have. If you into the mead welding, you're doing mead welding, flux core, get you some mead pliers. Man, these are a plus because you can get the nozzle, you can take the tip out. Get the wire, you can cut it like these are plus to have. Keep some on me, like I keep a couple pair. They're just good to have when you um, working with flux core me because sometimes, you know, you get BBs in the tip, you get stuff in it, so you can just easily clean it up, keep it going. It's very inexpensive. You can get you some of these from, it probably range anywhere from, depending on the brand, probably from $8 to $16. You know what I'm saying? So it depends on what you want. This is a tri square. This is a must have. This is a small one. I would say get both of them. Um, in this video, I only have one in it. My other one is in a truck, but I would say get you a, a long tri square, which is like a foot, and then get you a small one. That way you can be able to mark lines. You can set out your two on 12 or your well pattern that need to be done. Or if you're doing some small fitting, you can be able to do the small fitting you got to do before you tack it, make sure your lines are right. These are good to have. And a lot of times when I came up with my little bag, they always was like, man, I'm glad you got those things, man. And let, let me know that you really um, into what you do and it helps you work better. Like as a welder, it just helps you. You don't have to run all the time and go try to find things. I think this is a plus. This is a speed square. I think you should have one of these. I think you have two. But this video only have one. This is the big one. I think you should have the small one and the big one, but most definitely the small one. Um, this the speed square man you can do so much you can do so much it can kill several birds in one stone because they got the degrees on it you can set find your pivot point uh find what you need to mark off you can trace your lines scrap your lines with it there's a few different things you can and you can square your pieces up and make sure they but not like it's a lot of things you can do with this i think it's a plus to have one as a welder because you don't want to just I have seen people that just weld something up and you can tell that it was crooked or something. You know what I mean? You want to take pride in what you do. Don't just, you know, focus on just welding along. Like, man, it was on there crooked. I just welded up. Like, you know, fix it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I have seen people do that before. Take pride in what you do. Cover extra tools. It won't cost you that much. These, you can get this one and the small one probably to get it for under 30 bucks. You get this from Home Depot Lowe's or online. Or now, most welders I know 
um, can use a cutting torch. I think using a cutting torch is a plus. So I think you should have a striker and some tilt cleaners. The tilt cleaner is going to always be a plus because things end up getting up in there from cutting depends on how thick your metal is and whatnot. And having a striker on you to be able to go and get the, I think this is just a plus to have in your bag. These two things are very, very cheap. You can get this from anywhere. You know what I mean? Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight got these down a dozen, Home Depot, all those Lowe's, all those good places. Walmart, um, online, Amazon. There's a few different places you can get those from, a lot of different stores. So I wouldn't go all the way out, but I think it's good to have some. And if you don't know how to use a cutting torch, I think that you should try to get you some. Some pointers, I'm going to actually do uh, a video soon on just cutting torches procedures because when it all said and done, that oxaline and that oxygen would always be able to cut. You can cut small or big pieces, depends on what you're doing. And it's a plus to be able to know how to do it. So just <clears throat> having that as a welder is a plus. And get you a good This is actually six and a half rather Great brand, I love it. Um, a Dewalt, I like Dewalt. You can go with whatever you want to go with, but I got I like Dewalt. Um, get you a good grinder. That way you can be able to fix the things yourself or do little stuff. And and then the company don't have to read. You know, sure. It it, it kind of show you that you you know you believe in what you do. You come up with your bag. Say, hey, I'm ready to work. I got my grind. I got my chip and hammer. I got my well the good. They don't have to give you that. I have seen been on jobs and seen people walk up. So they've been welded for 20 years and they didn't even have a welder good. You know what I mean? Like they didn't have nothing. Like so if you if you say you're something, man, even for a year, if you're getting into it, believe in what you do, at least have the basic essentials. These are basic essentials to me, things that you can actually do. Fabrication would also like there's a few things you can do. So if you get into the welding, then you say, hey man, I'm gonna get into the fabrication, these same tools you can use to do some great fabrication work. No lie, like I have fabricated many things with these basic tools. So get you a good grinder. And when you go, keep a couple of good grinding essentials on you. Get you a grinding wheel that fits your grinder. Get you a buffing pad that fits your grinder. Get you a cutting wheel. You know, a couple cutting wheels that fit your grinder. Get you a wire brush because this is handy. That way you don't have to use your hand wire brush all the time. It's something that you're doing a lot of. You need to clean it. You clean it up real quick and keep it moving. You know what I mean? Like these are some basic things to have. Just wanted to give you a small video on this because a few people asked me about it. And I think that as a beginner, you just want to come equipped. So remember, when you're going out getting your first job, dress for the job. Don't dress like you a pastor. Don't dress like you a lawyer. You don't dress like a doctor. Dress like a welder. Come in looking like you are ready to go to work right then. You're clean, but you're ready. You know what I mean? They might say, hey, can you go to work now? I can't tell you. I had even had a job like that. They was like, are you ready to go to work now? I'm like, hey, I'm ready. You can put me to work right now. So I believe, honestly, if you would stay ready, as the old folks say, you don't have to get ready. So these are some basic things you need. I think these are plus being independent. Uh, hope, hopefully some of this, these tips I'm giving you can help you. For those who follow me, for those who are new to the channel, check out the website. It is www hogonwelding.com. It is www.hogonwelding.com. I have a few different things on there I can uh, help you with from consultations, from welding skids, uh, blueprints, uh, also um, container consultation for those who got prints and want to know what they can and can't do. I help on that field. Also have encouragement for those who just want to go in there and just leave some comments and let, uh, let me know how they like the product, how they like the website, or how they like the videos. I appreciate it. I salute everyone. And I guess, like I say, keep getting your hog on. I like to lead by example. So I wanted to show you some things. And I think coming from us, we need someone who looked like us, who actually um, been in the field, had, had his hands on, and can actually get out there and can tell you what you need to do, what works, what doesn't work. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to dress nothing up. I'm just going to give it to you real. So I feel if you go to the job, you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, and you will create more opportunities for yourself. Like, I have seen it. <clears throat> People have pulled up the job. They had their little bag. With, every, with all the little stuff in it that was ready to go and the people hired them right then. They moved up faster. So I think that if you come equipped, if you spend just a little money to get the basic essentials you need, you can do so much, so much as a beginner. So I wish you success. I hope everything works out for you. Keep getting your hog on and I'm out. Black Phoenix.